the, um, the, the two books are quite discreet. Myths and one, myths two, they, they are um, slightly different, although they are focused with the same um, communication names. Book Medicine One is slightly more general. You've got units he headed uh, like um, working with psychiatry, working in psychiatry, presenting complaint um, and things like that. Whereas in uh, Medicine Two, you've got um, discrete areas like psychiatry, specifically sports medicine um, and surgery, etc. Um, but the under each of uh, uh, the underlying organisation in each book is actually quite general, because if you've got um, uh, if you just specifically focus on one type of communication just for surgeons, then you're excluding the type of information that a, uh, an obstetrician or a gynaecologist or a paediatrician might need. Um, having said that, the actual specific skills that are required in each branch are effectively the same. And the, um, for, if I start with the, um, the first book, the um, background medically to that is based on um, my own experience of teaching plus the sorts of um, situations that the doctors and nurses need in their day-to-day -day life and the exams, but it's also backed up with the um, backed up by the uh, Oxford Handbook of Clinical Medicine, so that there is a there is a um, a very sound medical background to the to the books, and the books were checked by two medical experts as well. So um, they would also be checking whether. Uh, what was written was actually relevant to the world of work because one of them was a consultant working in a hospital in the UK and the other was a, a doctor who was also a, or is now a, a teacher of English. Um, so we had two different angles. Um, looking at the second um, book, each of the units is, is referenced to one of the Oxford handbooks. Um, so the um, the unit on sports medicine is related to the Oxford Handbook uh, on sports medicine and psychiatry to the Oxford Handbook on psychiatry, surgery, etc. But with, again, the backdrop being the um, Oxford Handbook of Clinical Medicine and the Oxford Handbook of Clinical Specialities. Um, so there's a, a sound basis from, from the medical uh, input. Um, this aspect can be daunting, dealing with the medicine can be daunting for teachers rather than students because they've already got that, but the teachers have got a, a lot of reassurance um, in the fact that what they're dealing with is, is sound medically. Well, the um, communication um, across both books is, is um, built up bit by bit. Um, at the beginning, the um, communication tasks are are quite straightforward because we're aiming at a you know lower level, obviously. And um, for example, for unit one of um, medicine one, we're looking at the presenting complaint, which is the very beginning of the um, presentation, and then we look at questions related to pain. So you're dealing with very simple. Um, areas of language which are important in, when you get to medicine too but um, we've already you know, you, you've you covered that and then by the time they get to medicine too they will have built up other skills so you're getting very um, discreet skills um, dealt with um, throughout both books but specifically throughout medicine one which then the uh, ability of um, the students increases and increases so that by the end they're able to deal with larger amounts of communication. When you get to medicine two, um, the, the, the chunks or the, the length of communication um, uh, is much longer. But in order to back this up, each of the elements within the um, 
medicine too, like the vocabulary, the signs and symptoms, the grammar, there is a, in most cases, a discrete communication element at the end of each section, which then um, is incremental and builds up to help students with the more um, sophisticated speaking scenarios that are dealt with in uh, book in, in medicine too.